Oh, hey, hey, everybody, it's Pumpkin. And it is the final installment of the grand saga of framing C Melody. At the end of this, you're going to see it hanging on the wall. <laughs> Finally, okay. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you at the end. Everybody. It is Monday, September 7th, holiday here, so I've got the day off, and we're going to continue with our 12-step process of getting this thing framed. This is the C Melody, the mat. Um, I need to cut it down to size. This cardboard is the back for my frame. My mat that I pieced together is longer than the frame, but it's a little narrower, but if I calculate correctly, the um, overhang of the opening of the frame should uh, cover that edge up. Otherwise, we're in deep doo-doo, but it's time to chop this down to size because I bought the gesso at Michael's and I wanted to try that out to fill up those seams. So with that being said, okay. How do I make sure that this is centered? What I did was I lined up my mat to the edge of the cardboard back on the frame. And it is easier to do without a cat laying on it, but we're gonna just deal with that. So I line it up and then, you know, the metric system is definitely better for some things. So I'm going to measure it in centimeters. How much do I need to get rid of? Lining this up, I'm showing approximately eight and a half centimeters, too big. So that would be about four and a quarter centimeters coming off of each end, theoretically. So just to make sure, I want to measure how wide my mat is on either side to make sure that my mats are the same because I pieced them all together. And this is approximately five and a half centimeters. And this is also five and a half. So I need to, they're the same. So if I'm cutting off four and a quarter off of either side, I should end up just fine. So what I did was um, I measured from the edge, the outside edge. I did four. And actually, let me do four and a quarter. And I'm just putting lines here and there. How does this thing work? There we go. So we'll do four and a quarter. And I just put <clears throat> three lines at four and a quarter. Actually, I should measure from the cut just in case this is not straight, but so that end up being, let's see, what does that end up being from the inside? Because we know that's straight because it's machine edge. So one, actually one centimeter, one and another. So we'll go one and another. And one and. Yeah, see, that's different. Okay, one and another. 
and and that one's way off. One and nubbin. Alright. <clears throat> and then I need to get my mat down to protect my table. And I found my T-square. So let's get that lined up. Yeah, Jazz, you're okay. Here. Okay, now. A knife. Are you laying on my knife? Yes, thank you. And for this, I think I have a metal ruler. I learned last time that I was cutting into my plastic ruler. So let's see here, let's start. Wait, am I gonna have an easier time this, this way? Start down here. And you're gonna skid off, you wanna skid off on the slop side, so we're gonna put the ruler on the good side and cut from this side. So if I, I'm cutting into the, the scrap portion, rather than if I were to have put my ruler here and slipped, I'd be slipping into my good part. I don't want to do that. So let's get this lined up here. And I'm cutting off the see, and I just went off with my, my ruler, cutting from the back side just so that I could draw a line on it without having to worry about it. First couple, I don't worry about digging into the table because I never make it all the way through. Side. Alright, so one in a nubbin. Where I drew it before. It seems pretty good. Okay. And that's what this is. Okay, there we go. And up. Okay. 
we'll eat. Close my knife, safety first. Okay. And should be done with this stuff. Sorry, Lily, taking your toys away. See how we did. along the top aren't nearly so noticeable because they're so small. So those aren't bad, but these bother me. And I suppose enough paint would eventually get them, <laughs> but I just feel like I want to uh, get those a little bit firmer um, closed up so that you don't see it at all. Another thing I could do to mask that would be to do some sort of faux finish over the top. Um, you could sponge a little black over it to make it more look like a navy leather. That would camouflage those seams a little bit too. Um, so I could do that, but I'm really interested in trying out that gesso, see how that works. So I think I'm gonna just leave this on the cardboard backboard just for the fact that um, it's the right size give it a little stability and not slop on my desk. So let's try that gesso out and see what that's like. All right. So this is what I purchased. Art Basics Gesso Clear. And uh, I used this, I believe that's what I used back in art class in college. One of our projects that we did was Silver Point. And so I had made this um, picture by taking just particle board. We covered it with gesso, many, many coats. I believe it was many coats, I'm not sure. And then sanded it till it was nice and smooth. And then you actually used a lead that was silver to carve essentially it into the surface. And then over time, the silver tarnishes, but this was the silver point picture I did and uh, I think it was gesso but we're talking you know 20 almost 30 years ago or maybe 30 years ago so I don't know but I think that's what it was so let's try this out I don't know if you're supposed to shake it, it doesn't really have any directions on here whatsoever so I don't know how big of a mess it's gonna make. Let me grab uh, 
I don't want to do this in a separate container so it goes. I'll just pour it in the salsa jar. All right, let's check this stuff out. Just a little blob. Just see what it's like. All right, and let's see here. I'm just going to use that same brush. So let's give it a whirl. Let's see if this does anything to. back out. <laughs> this one's pretty good already. This one doesn't even open up. But if this is the stuff I remember, you could even do like a texture and then paint over it and have like a, you know, textured kind of plaster look to it. I really just want to fill those cracks up so that they don't show at all once it's painted. Get all the way around, that'll be pretty dry so that I can keep going and add a little more to fill that in. Alright. Now, these, because there's so little tape holding them together, they might benefit from this too. Just split that open, squeeze it in there, close it up, brush it out. Maybe I want to take it down on either side. But let's see. Couldn't hurt. Let's put a little painter's tape on that. To get to lay flat and hold it still.
this one down here. Let's spin this around. These ones are so much less uh, area. I'm going to just put that right on the bevel to get that totally flat in there. That'll work. Same with these and just taping right on the bevel to really hold it flat. Well, I'll do the same with this. Let's get rid of the ones over here. So I don't end up with a lump, and we'll just take this.
We got it. Open your mouth. Oh, you do have tape in your mouth, you little asshole. Stop it! <sighs> Shit up. Seems to dry pretty quick, so that's good. I'm gonna let this completely dry, check it out, and then if it looks good, we can uh, repaint, um, touch it all up with the paint so that we can get it all framed and back together again. But it seems to have worked for uh, kind of filling in those cracks. I don't know how brittle this stuff is going to be for um, flexibility. So I'm just going to be really, really careful with it when, uh, when assembling it because I don't want it to crack out, flake out or anything like that out of the cracks. So let me just get a little more blob right in there. And we're gonna let this dry and come back to it. All right, see you soon. It'll be a flash. <clears throat> That's completely asleep. That's completely asleep. I don't know where the other one is, but that's probably also completely asleep. All right. It's been, I don't know, an hour or so. I was editing, but the, uh, the gesso's dry. We won't really know for sure how well it does until we paint over it, but let's, uh, let's paint over it. I need my foot to wake up though first. Oh my God, pins and needles, pins and needles. And um, yeah, so it looks, it looks like it, it helped with the, uh, looks like it helped fill in the cracks a little bit, but we'll try it out. We'll see. Let me get you up in the stand. Also, here's my, my new rig. <laughs> That's how we're doing these shots now. Okay. All right, let's get out some paint and paint over this and see how it turns out. I had to hide my paintbrush from Kitty. Where did I put it? I can't remember. What's over here? Stop. Damp. Paper towel, dry it out. And let's put uh, another coat on this.
sure these air conditioners in these apartments are so freaking loud. Always loud, loud, loud. Nearly so uh, flexible though. It's a, little, it's a little stiff. Here. Watch on that edge. Careful. So much cat hair. Lily. Alright, can you get centered, please? There we go. Ah, ah. Oh, you little asshole. No. No. Wipe it once it gets on that mat. It'll smear it all over the place. What I have done in the past when I've gotten a little paint on the white part of the mat is I just took a razor blade and kind of whittled a, a little bit away to get it off of there. Trying to smooth it out so it doesn't look like a big old hunk. But I wasn't being careful. I was trying to keep one eye on this cat. a little bit more and another coat cover that overall I don't know yet it's too early to tell whether or not that was even worth it putting the gesso on there but uh, it was worth a try you can imagine when you get into the really really big paintings it's probably kind of hard to find maps for those If this does work well enough, you can always splice them together if you wanted it matted. Lots of little hairs stuck in here. Okay. 
I might just grab a hair dryer to speed this up so I can finish this before uh, my whole day is spent waiting for paint to dry. Now I'll let it go five minutes and touch it up. Hmm. I'll be impatient and just sit here farting with it. Just dry, damn it. Just need that to dry enough to get one more blob on it and then that's good. Let's just get that one blob on it. Okay. Oh, still showing. Alright, I'm getting impatient. I'm going to grab a hair dryer and just get that dry enough so I can put the last coat on it. Don't wipe up your desk with a paper towel with paint on it. That's not good. Okay. All right. I don't know if my seams are any more hidden than they were before. It's really hard to tell. Um, I'm sure if I would have done more and more coats of the gesso, that would have done the job. But I'm being impatient. And uh, just want to get it on the wall. So I'm going to just slap this last coat of paint on here and we'll let that dry probably with a hair dryer. <laughs> I should let it dry all the way before I stick it in the glass so it doesn't get stuck to the glass. Okay, Lily and just a little bit here. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry through it in the frame and uh, get it up on the wall. So we'll come back to throw this baby in the frame. All right, so I used the hair dryer, let it dry a little bit on its own. It is time to get this thing framed. I don't want to uh, disturb it too much and bust those seams open again. So we'll very carefully just get it. If I painted it into the cardboard, there we go, get that loose. All right, now, let's, uh, let's do this thing. Okay, how am I gonna do this? Let's see, let me move this whole thing over. And let's see, bring the frame over here. I think the glass is not clean. I clean that real quick. And it's just plexiglass. There was a suggestion to use the um, the glass for measuring things, put it over the top and you know draw lines that way. This one, that would have been a great idea, but they've actually got the glass glued in, the plastic glued to the frame already. Otherwise, good idea. Now, 
so if I can get that mat in there very carefully. bend it at all so I'm actually going to keep it on the cardboard and flip it over that way. Get it in there without bending it. There we go. All right. Now, hopefully, I measured everything correctly. And I knew it was going to be a little narrower than my frame, but that the uh, overlap would hide that. So let me just make sure that I've got it in there where I can't see any daylight showing through. And that looks good. And I think it's in there pretty good, so it shouldn't shift. Pretty tight fit, so I think I'm okay. Otherwise, I might have run a little bit of tape on the edge just to keep it from getting wonky in there. Now, time for the painting. And let's see here. This is the top because here there's a mermaid's heads, tails. Oh no, it's reversed. So, does it matter? Hmm, I don't know. Um, the label's up here, so I guess that makes this the top. Okay, let's do it that way then. And I taped it to the original page that came with the thing. Let's see here. So that it should be a nice tight fit. and the tape and I need to watch what I'm doing on that. So we just peek in here. It's so exact. Okay. And then let me check this side. Check the other side, and then I'd probably tape it in place. Let's see here. Let's see here. There we go. Now I think I'll tape it in there. Keep it from moving. Get my tape on again. Just 
kind of lightly tape, tape it in, double check it, and then stick it in place. Let's see here. Okay, now carefully flip it over and see if it looks okay. Now I should tape more. Seriously, Lily. Get on the last nerve. Or did I want it to, but. So I'm going to do it the way I thought I would first. So let's pick that back up. Do take this in first. Make sure it doesn't slide. Get your claws off. Jeez. I hear all this now. Yep, now I got cat footprints all over it. Asshole. Yeah, that looks good now. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see through that side. And so let's go more. Further, turn that up. Further over. It's driving me a little crazy. Okay, darn it, Lily. Okay, you're out of here. Go ahead and cry, girl. Baby. 
Yeah, you keep that up. So they couldn't behave themselves. Yeah. We'll do the other side. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna just put that sucker in place, call it a day. Thingamajigger broke off when I had it hung, so I just screwed it into the actual frame itself. Now the dog wants in, of course. Jasmine. Hopefully that is enough. Alright, cross fingers, drum roll, let's see how let's see how it did. Pretty good. Let's 
clean that glass, get it up on the wall, and be done with this. I've had enough of this one. put this up on the wall and I'll show you a nice close-up of it to see how that turned out with splicing the mats together. All right, so she's on the wall finally. So this this is like centered, centered those so that looks smaller over there than it did over there. It was supposed to be centered but whatever. It was close ish. All right, let's let's take a nice close look at it. So, I think it looks pretty good, the mat and everything. And I'll get up there so you can see where the splices were. Let's see here. So, hi. Um, how do I do this without showing a reflection? I guess over here still a reflection but yeah you can't really find them in there anymore the reflection helps you can kind of see there is one right there kind of see it but not very well with the reflection on the the glass so that worked but I've got it like I had no wiggle room with between my ribbon and my mat you know, it was like exact. And then I also had like no wiggle room between my mat and the overlap on that. So that's why like right here, you can see that the white duct tape, I did that to give myself a little, a little wiggle room by duct taping that ribbon down on the outside edge with white duct tape so that if I didn't get it exactly right that it wouldn't be so noticeable from further away. Um, one thing I have found though that some of these heavy paintings they'll start to sag in their frames so it wouldn't be a bad idea to pull that back apart. I didn't do it with this one. I'll do it later on. Um, and then on the back side of it to probably pull that paper back off. Use the spray adhesive on the back of the painting and stick it to the cardboard backing of the frame to keep it from sagging over time. But she's finally up, and uh, I like it. I think it looks pretty. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that 12 part series <laughs> of framing. It's a melody, but I absolutely love it. It's very pretty. All right, love you guys. Till the next, till the next time. Bye. Okay, so who thought she'd never get it done? Raise your hands. Yeah, I know. Um, ninety-five percent. Yeah, that's that's the standard here. That, that keeps you from ever, you know, taking any criticism to heart because you're not quite done yet. Yeah, we'll get to that part. It's it's. Yeah. Anyway, um, love it on the wall, and uh, she's already started another whip. So we'll see what she's working on in the next one. Maybe, maybe a tag. Who knows? All right. See you guys. Love ya. And um, uh, be sure and hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed that, and you know, give it a thumbs down if you didn't. Tell us why. No, don't do that. Love ya. Bye.